Hockey has impacts from objects like frozen pucks, sticks, boards, and goals. And everything that moves is moving fast. Collisions on the ice are violent. It's oftentimes like a car accident when two things going fast at each other collide. Damage can happen. In a big hit or crash into the boards, shoulder bones can get jammed out of place. Shoulder dislocations occur when the arm bone, the humerus, is separated completely from the shoulder socket. And this happens when a player typically falls on the ice with his arm outstretched and rotated to the side. Do you really just pop it back in place? When a player dislocates their shoulder, we want to put it back in immediately. We have lots of things that we can do in the locker room to make that happen. The longer the shoulder is out of socket, the more likely it is to have a nerve injury from the stretch. Most of the time, the players do not return in the same game. Rare instances, the player will want to return, and if they have good strength, we'll be able to let them back in. Typically, there is damage to the ligaments and soft tissue structures around the joint called the cartilage, specifically the structure called the labrum, which means lip. If the shoulder pops out again or dislocates repetitively, then surgery is recommended in order to repair the labrum and repair those ligaments that were torn. Shoulder bones, like the collarbone, break. The collarbone is called the clavicle, and it's a long bone that can move in several different directions. It can rotate, it can elevate up and down, and it can move side to side. This allows a connection between the shoulder and the arm bone with the torso of the body. And unfortunately, it will occasionally break in contact sports like hockey. Typically, this occurs when the player falls on the ice on his outstretched arm or lands on his shoulder or is struck into the boards by an opposing player. If it does fracture, we can't repair that in the locker room. That will need to be evaluated, typically in a hospital setting, and perhaps even with surgery. And knees get twisted. The MCL stands for medial collateral ligament. It's the broad ligament on the inside of the knee. It prevents the knee from going inward from a force that's directed from the outside of the joint. We see it very commonly in hockey because of the nature of the game and the nature of the equipment. Fortunately, most MCL injuries are treated non-operatively. They tend to heal anywhere within one to six weeks of injury, depending upon their severity. Whereas the ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament, it's an injury that occurs with ligament on the inside of the knee. Now, unlike the MCL, the ACL does not heal on its own and typically requires surgery in order to reproduce its function. It happened to Carl Gunnarsson, and the Blues team physicians helped him recover and get back on the ice. Carl had a devastating injury. It's hard for these athletes to have an ACL injury. They know that it's gonna be an extended period of time that they're gonna be out. Fortunately, Carl did great after his surgery. He was able to score a winning goal and hoist the Stanley Cup. Being his team physician, orthopedic surgeon, watching him go through the surgery and the rehabilitation, and then eventually hoist the cup over his head, it's a great feeling. The Barnes Jewish and Washington University orthopedics physicians are the team behind the team. And that's the science of St. Louis Blues hockey.